It's February the 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 twelfth, twenty twenty two, and you are <laughs> listening to the future of photography. The future of photography. Yeah, the the date thing. I'm not good with the dates, you know. Ah. I'm not good with time, so that makes it really <laughs> <laughs> double impossible <laughs> to set up shows internationally uh, across date lines. But uh, we do it, especially if you're if you're busy at doing at at ungodly hours. That's right. You That's a, right. Uh, bit of a late shift. I'm glad though. <laughs> yeah, those who are are uh, listening, uh, you do yourself a lot of favors by not seeing how tired I am, and uh, <laughs> but you'll miss the visual. So you have to balance. You, you know that that that'll make people actually watch. So um, Adrian is busy he's out with the family so it's just the two of us this show is crumbling to pieces oh. at least that's what adrian told us he's doing it's true yeah <laughs> it's true um, anyway we have decided to do an to do a pics only kind of show just stuff that we found interesting funny inspirational um so both of us have brought a few links for you to check out and we'll be showing things and recommending things and then you can go to the show notes and click things and end up uh, hopefully with some it's, interesting input it's fun i think all of us like we we have a little basket of pics that we stumble across search <laughs> for research we're always interested in the stuff and put it in a little basket and we like to share those things because they are inspiring and we're talking yes. about so the first thing I, I want to I wanna just bring out bring up the first one that I brought, which is just in yesterday, I think, um, and that's the first James Webb telescope photos, which when I when I saw this headline, <laughs> I was like, oh, we see, we'll see galaxies, we'll see deep space, we'll see <laughs> nebulas, all this kind of stuff. So um, here's a video of what they. Uh, broad and it's a bit of a backgrounder and the people in the in a, in a meeting room and then they uh, they show th that they are in the process of calib calibrating these 18 mirrors and they need to be calibrated and 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 turned into the right angle so they found some galaxy out there or some star out there that is kind of a bit a bit separate from the others and then um, all these 18 mirrors bring back 18 individual picture, uh, pictures of this one star. It's like 18 different kind of telescopes. And uh, these are not aligned, but they need to be aligned. And that's what they want to do over the next three months. So um, it brought back a picture of the same star 18 times at different locations, which is a calibration photo. <laughs> so, Yeah, it's funny how, how um, it, I guess they can't do this in Photoshop. No, I, well, they could maybe, but in this case, they even know which one of these pictures is from which mirror, so they uh, can now start arranging things and, and turning them, and they have these little actuators behind those little hexagonal panels, so they will, they will move them and tilt them and uh, bring everything together into the middle, into one point. That's kind of the goal here. Um, but that is just one thing. That is, that is the one thing that was for me amazing enough to see that because it's, it's behind the scenes information. The other thing they have is they have uh, one of the instruments that can uh, swap in different lenses in the path, in the light path. And one of them is specially designed to take a photo, an actual photo of these 18 mirrors. So there is a selfie of uh, the James <laughs> Webb telescope that is... This is a real selfie of it. And w when you look at it, you see these 18 different panels and uh, one is very bright. That's because it's pointing right at a galaxy somewhere. So um, they are they, they have a way to take a photo. I was very disappointed initially when they sent this thing out and they didn't put a GoPro on it or something. Like, you know, like SpaceX does when they launch something, there's a GoPro somewhere and then you can see live pictures. But they explained that that would be kind of dangerous because camera creates heat when it operates and they can't have any heat out there so that would jeopardize the mission but uh, apparently james webb telescope can take a picture of itself isn't that glorious yeah 
Yeah, yeah. It still boggles the mind that the technology exists that can produce, uh, launch, set, and adjust effectively a camera millions of miles uh, from inception and actually adjust, calibrate, and focus. Um, it shows you when we complain about our <laughs> our personal cameras not functioning right, um, we only have ourselves to blame. <laughs> and, you, and you have to kind of um, uh, be aware that if something breaks out there, you cannot just send it in for uh, a loop and an adjustment. <laughs> no. <laughs> in space, no one can come and help you fix your problem. Unless unless you're um, Hubble telescope and you are just a few hundred kilometers above the Earth and there is a space shuttle that can come yeah, and put... That's some, arm's length. That's arm's length, yeah. Earthlings Compared to like a um, million miles or something. Yeah, I have a question for you, Chris, is with all the sophistication uh, the human race can produce, and, and this has got to be in some ways the pinnacle, we've discussed this before, yeah. of what we can achieve, why are we so lizard brain about our social circumstances globally, locally, nationally? How, how can one species produce something so elaborate, so sophisticated, and yet our, our, our kind of social dynamics are still in the Stone Age. Do you expect an answer from me? I don't think I have one. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I'll solve the world. You, you come from problems. a long range. Yeah. <laughs> you come from a long range of German philosophers, and we might as well start. It's the entire burden is on my shoulders. Thank you for that. Exactly. Um, you represent. You represent. <sighs> no, no good answer. I'd I'd rather mm. I'd rather. Uh, bask in the glory of creation of what we can do and can make and uh, and, <laughs> well, and, and enjoy that. Uh, we 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 certainly uh, are are with you there. Right? So there that's what go. photography is all about, right? You brought exploration. Yeah. Yes, you brought one that is also space related. Let's follow up with that one. Um, what are we looking at here? Um. This is not an abstract painting from the 70s, I assure you, um, but it's a different way of analyzing radio wave images or, or capturing and, and that analyzing and seeing. It's not only light that gets um, kind of uh, captured uh, by these cameras but radio waves create an image in, in the same way that, say, our infrared cameras capture an image with slightly different renderings when we apply certain colors and, and frequencies to it. And, you know, we are, we are then left to study um, the mysteries of the universe in yet another way, not just with bounced light, but with actual... Radio waves, and we know that radio waves are also, I guess, the, the 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 stuff of the universe as much as light is. And and so while we used to think that space is nothing, just empty, uh, we now know that it is, that there is a fluid, in a way, a fluid dynamic. I'm sure astrophysicists are going to email us and criticize how I see the world. But but uh, there is a kind of fluid dynamic of, uh, that's how I see it anyway. That, that's what um, it feels like when you look at these space. pictures, right? It looks like, like yeah. uh, fluids wafting yeah. around each Under, other. And... Un underwater. If, if, we, if you take a fish tank and dump uh, some color into it, um, you get these kind of explosions yeah. Of, yeah. Of, 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 of color and, and light that are uh, amazing. And that is the nature of our universe as we attempt to, to study it and find our place in it. Very good. So good, good, good luck to us. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, you also brought the top shots from the 2021 International Landscape Photographer of the Year. And that is some pretty astounding work. 
that we see here. Yeah, it, you know, in, in the exploration of our kind of greater universe, also the exploration and, and, and visual um, mysteries of our own planet are revealed here with photographers who've taken kind of next level um, landscape photographs that are truly astonishing. Um, and, and this is the kind of pick that is easy to miss um, for photographers. It's in the Atlantic, not really a photo magazine, um, but they, they uh, comprise of, of ways of seeing and, and, and obviously there's a tremendous amount of patience involved to, to take these photos um, in the right light in the right composition and in the right scale um, that gives us a significant appreciation of the world around us. I'm just, I'm just scrolling through them and there's some really amazing stuff in there. Yeah. I like, I like what, what they do with the shapes, with color palettes, with um, just the general mood. Some of them are really abstract, like here, uh, Derby, Western Australia, desert kind mm. of aerial stuff. Um, very yeah. ethereal, mythical kind of stuff here in Switzerland, a waterfall. I That's mean, just beautiful stuff. I mean, yeah, I mean, if I was to, to, to just see these out of context and someone said, oh, this is from some planet called Earth, I would definitely want to visit. You brought another one that I find charming, as in the title says, the charming miniature photos of... Ashraful Arifin, who I've never heard of, um, but yeah. these are these are fun, fun, fun to play with, and that's pretty much what what he's doing, right? He's playing with toys. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm I'm fascinated by the whole genre of of miniature photography, or yeah. phot photographs, and model making that recreate the earth, but do so in the way that the artist, photographer, constructor is, quote, in control. Uh, th these are images uh, that look realistic in some ways. Of course, the depth of field is a little off focus, uh, just the rendering, the color. But it, it, it's an indication of a, I guess, a photographer of the world who who feels um, the necessity to control every aspect of it, and I, of course, identify with with creating imaginary landscapes, something that I do, and and so I'm I'm fascinated by it. And if you go to Instagram, there is a um, a whole world of creators that yep. work in this genre. I'm I'm always amazed, and I also wonder why are we attracted to images like this. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I've uh, I've I've dabbled in in tabletop photography, um, mostly in let's say more advertising focused stuff. But um, being in having a, a little world that you control, and as you said, it's about control. It's about setting it up exactly the way you want. Um, it's relatively relatively easy to get the lighting right because you don't have to lug around huge studio strobes that kind of stuff. You can all do all this on a very small scale, um, and and toss in all your imagination. I mean, the the photographer here works a lot with reflections and things where there's water involved, or I don't know, is it water? Is it epoxy? Is it? You can't be sure, and um, it gives you it gives you a way to create recreate things but um on your kitchen table if you want to i find this yeah it's probably a good subject for us uh to do a whole episode on tabletop photography and um you know it's it's, it's kind of advantages and disadvantages but it is something that uh in light of how long some of us um have kind of experienced an isolation it may not be the last time that you can do epic photography right in your own home. Very true. I've seen a feature of, um, what is it, Adam Savage's uh, new endeavor, Tested.com, and they had a, and a few episodes on tabletop recreations of like oh. movie scenes. And they had they had little very articulate, articulate models of people and they would uh, they, like, they, they, would, they would pose them and then they'd add, um, I don't know sparks and smoke and lots of things sure. that uh, 
that you that yeah. you can do and and have have little fight scenes from like uh, from an alternative Star Wars type universe that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, a few, I think a few months ago I had brought a uh, a pick into one of our discussions of of uh, the photographers who create epic classic photographs. Yes, in in miniature and um, Cordis and I forget the 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 group's name currently, but um, these so, are just amazing technical achievements. The next the one again, you you brought a whole host of things. I was, I'm, I'm 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 seriously underrepresented today, but um, <laughs> here's one at uh, this is colossal dot com, uh, and this is okay. This is two things. This is art objects made of glass and a, a way of photographing them. Which is also not very simple. Not so, so easy. No, but I, you know, I, I brought these because, first of all, the, the images are very striking, but you really do want to reach in and touch and hold these objects. And the objects, because they're made of glass, I think provokes an interesting discussion for photographers because they are constructed in layers. And um, as you know, there, there are two ways that we know in software to control an image is one with layers and one with nodes and layering of different objects create yet something that's greater than the uh, sum of the parts here and when you use glass and imagery to kind of provoke uh, an object which really doesn't exist except to the eye i think there's a lot to learn from them and they're beautiful objects in and of themselves um so you know, again, layers is is a way of looking at images and constructing images uh, that you know photographers use and 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 can use more and more effectively as software becomes uh, easier to use. It's it's like a whole bunch of different art forms in in smashed into one uh, photograph. I mean, we're we're looking at I don't even know how you make these kind of objects. There's probably glass blowing involved there's uh some i don't even know laser techniques from outside to uh, to etch some of these structures into the glass maybe maybe not i don't know so it's the whole art of creating these objects and then um it's this whole layering aspect and then it's the art of photographing them which again if you shoot a picture of something that is that that reflects light then you better know what is being reflected and in which way and you control that um so yes i think these are just they're they're worth looking at for inspiration if nothing else and there's a lot uh, not a lot but there are many artists work in uh layered glass reflections yes. and uh even different kinds of plastics that um are so provocative and they work at different scales some of them are massive scales um, for museums and installations, and others are very, very tiny. Um, so you can see, if you study these, you can see the different layers that go in on the yeah. side and how they kind of are are applied. And then the, you know, and, and, and you can look at right through them, and yet they have dimension when looked at from a different angle. And and in in these cubes, you will also see like several of them from different angles at the same time because the, that's the way the the glass breaks the light. So um, here's one that I brought, which is uh, another one of these future. We live in the future kind of things. Um, another video of two minute papers um, who looks at advances in AI, advances in in machine learning, and. Here's here's an interesting one because um, it goes back to back to these um, GPT image GPT frameworks networks where you could just tell that thing what you want and it would make it like uh, storefronts with a certain label or owls in an expressionist uh, fashion or uh, I don't know what what they brought here 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 are good examples pandas as uh, in, in stained glass like make me pandas in stained glass <laughs> or a hedgehog using a calculator this is a completely computer generated picture of a hedgehog using a calculator and it's it's made because of that verbal written prompt there's nothing that that 
I mean, this is a trained network. It knows what a hedgehog looks like. It knows what a calculator looks like. This hedgehog is tapping with its paw on the calculator. So it's using the calculator, and that was in the prompt. So um, there's uh, stuff that you can now do with these networks. Here's another one. Um, a painting of a fox in the style of Starry Night. Yeah, these are these are really uh, uh, amazing is, use. I think. Uh, would Would you say that that in, in training these networks, I think you you know one can understand what is a painting, um, the painting Starry Night, uh, and a fox. Uh, but I think the real genius is in the style yes. of or using. What does that mean and how does that translate? The, in a way, the active prompt is where it gets interesting. Right. And it, and it, it, but it goes on. I mean, here, we, let's just go through a few of these examples in the video. Um, it shows a, a corgi wearing a red bow tie and a purple party hat. And that is approaching photorealistic quality. So at yes. one point, um, maybe now, maybe not too far in the future, you will be you will have very realistic stuff or a pixel art corgi pizza. I mean, who yeah, would have... This is, aston this is astonishing. Really. It is really mind-blowing, but that is not all. That is, that is where we are right now. now. Now, this new network that's called Glide um, works even more, in more interesting ways. Here's a photo of a, of a... That's a painting of a girl with a dog. And what they do, what they did is they just marked that area of the dog in green, telling the AI to replace it with a different dog. And the AI goes in and uh, and 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 does that. And uh, just let's just hold it on for a second. The dog and, it, yeah. and the girl and the hand and the parts that are overpainted. And then it goes and um, and puts a completely different dog in there. Oh, yeah, much cuter dog. Or here, zebras roaming in the field. There's a field, an empty field, and uh, a square, and that shows up here. Put the zebras here. Put a vase on a table. This is entirely mind-blowing. Yeah. Th there's an empty table, like a sofa table, and uh, and uh, they, they, they mark an area, an empty area, and they put a vase here, and it puts a vase here, including the reflections will, and yeah. everything. This is amazing. This will be very revolutionary in the world of, of visual special effects. Oh, totally. And, uh, film filmmaking, where where a director can go, uh, you know, uh, erase the the wires uh, in the in the overhead of the building, or uh, put a stop sign at the corner. Here, um, put a hat on the, the on that man. That man doesn't have a hat. Yeah. Put a hat on him, and bang! There's there's your hat. And of course, uh, what you can put on a on a still photo, you can also put on a moving image sooner or later. It's just a matter yes. of uh, yeah. a few weeks processing of doing that. Processing I mean, this is in speed. Yeah. This this is just just amazing stuff that they can do with AI, and it's only getting better. At one point, I mean. Your job, you as a director, your job will be in jeopardy sooner or later because some kid in a, in the basement will have a have an AI to and 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 put those scenes together just by verbal prompts. You know what I say, Chris? Bring it. Just <laughs> yeah, bring it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but here here's what cannot be replaced is storytelling. Asking a a machine to tell a story based on um, uh, our human endeavor of, of kind of connecting with people through story or understanding what makes a story or what engages as a story, that's a mystery of the organism. And I, I don't think that that is, one could certainly tell a story structurally, but to have an engaging story that works in the heart, like you, okay. I, I, I challenge, I challenge you to a uh, computer, Make me a comedic 10-minute short based on a traffic violation. Give it, okay, let me write a script. Let me try something here. There is a there is a a, a, a very well-known network called GPT-3, which is by OpenAI, and um, there's a beta, and you can play with it. and And someone did that and uh, gave it the following prompt: "You are a robber and broke into an apartment." Suddenly, 
the residents come back, you hide in the closet. In a moment, you will be discovered. Generate three different plausible, empathetic and smart excuses why you are hiding in a closet in a stranger's apartment. <laughs> so, GPT-3 did, okay. did three, um, um, came up with three excuses. <laughs> First one. I'm sorry, I'm not a robber. I'm a delivery person who accidentally got into the wrong building. I was just looking for the apartment number 23 and then I got lost. I saw this closet and I thought I could hide here for a few seconds until I figure out what to do. I'll buy that. That's pretty smart. I mean, second one. Okay, there are two more. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm a gas station attendant and I accidentally pumped gasoline into my car instead of diesel. So I'm looking for a place to hide because I don't want the owner to see me. <laughs> <laughs> That's also really good. By okay. the way, that is something that I've done. Anyway, please. <laughs> Third one, last one. Um, again, th this is a this is an AI that came up with these excuses. Hi, I'm sorry for breaking into your apartment. I'm a student and I'm doing a research project on robberies. I didn't mean to actually rob your apartment. I was just trying to see what it would be like. Isn't Again. that mind blowing? I mean, this would, yes. this would not fly as an excuse, but a machine came up with these. And it is an excuse. It, yes. Good, bad, believable, or not. Not, not a believable an one. But I, I, I do stand corrected on, on that. So, yeah. Uh, give that, give that another five company. years, and you might be out of a job. I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Someone has to program those computers, though. Oh, very true. Uh, you, that's, that's, I, th I think that's, that's what, what these advancements, advancements need. They need people to, um, to use them, to program them, to, to guide them. It's like, gener it's like generative art. I mean, you still have to write the code and, and have true. an inkling about what the style um, and uh, properties of each image would be. So very, You have very to input. True. All right. And then last but not least, um, you brought something that is akin to generating fake things, people in this case, based on, on cartoons. And... I've yeah. seen I've seen this <laughs> cross my cross my uh, my timelines here like a couple of weeks ago, and I'm so glad you brought this because that is just mind-boggling stuff. I'm not sure that's just an AI that did that, right? That's probably uh, you know. Um, I, I I think there is uh, definitely some uh, an artist who kind of uh, works in this. Uh, but th this is probably one of my favorite picks of today, where uh, these are uh, characters. It's hilarious. From the Simpsons, it's hilarious. And, and uh, these are astonishing human like recreations of cartoon characters that are absolutely amazing. And, and I think, again, the promise of synthetic actors, uh, synthetic people on film both and we've often talked about the law of unintended consequences here with a voice generation and subject generation but these are these are absolutely believable so believable that you can look at the human image the human like image and go oh they made a cartoon of that person yes. not the reverse and i think that is what <laughs> makes me just more and more amazed as I study these really uh, shockingly incredible ways of, of, of kind of experiencing how sophisticated uh, AI is becoming. So in the in future, <laughs> even it, 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 yeah, Ned Flanders from The Simpsons. In in the future, <laughs> it's 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 gonna be um, if, if you if you need to cast some actors, you will go to the computer and just dial in their properties and outcomes an actor. I'm not sure yeah. how, how, I mean, how real these are or if the, if the photographer just went out and looked through massive catalogs of, of models and found the right ones. But um, these are all amazing, amazing, amazing yeah, clothes. No, I, and by the way, it may be that we will just, on the back of a napkin, uh, just sketch a little story with stick figures and some properties and write a few words, and 
will have a, a visual representation that looks absolutely neorealistic uh, when we process that by AI. So I can see that. So that is the future of photography or maybe That's film, the future. filmmaking, storytelling, everything, <laughs> everything folded into into our future realities oh yeah. man we just hope that that this has been kind of inspiring and we yes. encourage everybody to look at this um yes don't get scared i think we're still a bit of a, a, a bit of a, a ways off to having we're us replaced as photographers <laughs> the camera is the camera is still not telling you where to stand and it's still like there's still a lot in the hands of the photographer so i guess um Yeah, we're, we're going to be okay for a while. So, for a while. that was it for this week. We'll be back soon with more. Uh, more people as well. Adrian is going to come back. And uh, until then, everyone, take care and see us online at TFOP Now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You've been listening to The Future of Photography. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com. Thank you.